Alright, uh, this session we have another little brown Bakelite. This one's in a little worse condition than the other one. Um, it is completely intact physically, however it is more uh, dirty and stuff. Um, it has no line cord on it, so it hasn't been worked on or anything. All right, let's get it apart and see what we've got to do. And this is a more desirable radio than the previous one. Uh, the smaller a radio is, the more desirable it is. Um, at, the, at the antique store, um, you have radios that are all different sizes, and the... Uh, What the hell that's from? I don't think it has anything to do with the radio, but we'll see. But we find that the uh, physically small ones sell a lot quicker than the ones that are large. All right, let's see. Good. For, that's just a one of those odd-looking little screws. You can't get the damn things out unless you have a screwdriver that's exactly the right size. Like this one. <laughs> but See that? It's not a hex. Some kind of odd connection goes in the trash can. Into the trash can. We put a regular, regular screw in there when we get done. Okay, the box <laughs> had eggs of some kind in it. I don't know, they were about a quarter inch in diameter, but all dried out, so they, they were not fresh eggs. Okay, all right, let's see. Z5, okay, I'm going to test the filaments on these. Okay, pin 8 is 1, and then um, three, 2 and 3. Okay, we got it. They're good. Usually if that's good, then the radio is okay. The rest of the tubes will be okay. Okay, this one will be 2 and 7. Good. Oh my goodness. Alright, this is a 2 and 7. Okay. Alright, SQ7. That one there is going to be 7 and 8. Okay, there's eight. Aha. Okie doke. Okay, okay, it's somebody's already written the numbers on here. Eight fifty L six. It's another two and seven. So somebody did work on this thing at one time or another. Okay. Now, okay, this is peanut brittle wire. Peanut brittle wire is wire that when you bend the insulation, the insulation cracks off. Alright. So, that one's okay, and this one's okay. It's just this one wire that's peanut brittle. So I'm going to just take it. I'll take it and shove some uh, insulation. We'll, we'll just pull it out of there and we'll put another piece of wire. Alright, standard 5050 green is the low voltage one. Okay. We even have a chassis number. The, the chassis has been pretty much, I mean, the, these have been pretty much scraped up, but we do have the number if we need a schematic. The chances of needing a schematic on a radio like this is almost zero. Uh, all the way over to here. And the other one to three. You hear it clacking. It's good. Okay, I'm going to take it out and sandblast it, and um, 
you can see how crappy it looks okay I will be back okay see how nice it turned out nice and just completely clean okay when you're sandblasting make absolutely sure you don't get your sandblasting toward the speaker the sand will cut that speaker just like it's a knife okay there's no spring whoever replaced the spring replaced the dial cord did not put a spring so we got to find out what the heck's going on there oh the springs inside okay it's sure not doing anything it's it's just not um, it's not put in there correctly that going around that corner makes the spring in ineffective okay let's see oh yeah people people just don't they just don't oh my god that was totally wrong totally wrong another thing is being able to work it fast like this on this point right here where we have that contact strip that goes in and cleans that up so we get good contact gets rid of the scratching when you tune okay okay now okay spring okay okay so we have to have the match we want it to where clockwise is clockwise and counterclockwise is counterclockwise Okay, make the uh, dial match up. Okay, put a little oil. Okay. Oh yeah. It's just motor oil. Okay, that gets our gets our do the turning good. Okay, now. Good. Okay, two. Come back up here. Okay. Man. <laughs> Okie doke. Wait, what's that? Okay, next we take this. All right, this is not going to work. What's happened is those rubber washers that hold this thing have turned into um, crystal. They've turned into crystal. They are not flexible. So I'm going to have to um, let me pull this off again. We're going to have to have to move that up about looks like maybe a quarter of an inch, almost a quarter of an inch. Maybe looks like between three sixteenths and a quarter inch. We've got to move that shaft upwards. Why that's doing that? Okay. 
hold. That looks good. Okay, and here is a 6L, so a 6, uh, 50L6. Yeah, 50L6. Okie doke. Well, it's K7. Okay. 35Z5. And the 12SA7. Converter tube. Now I can take this and use it. This is going to be very much more cleaned, so I don't need to do much now. I'm just use that rag up. Okay, we'll do a recap job. Okay, we've got an O3. Okay, that's an O6. Six. Six. Do we need any double ones or anything? No one. Okay, we need a. One okay. Okay. Point oh one. Paste. Um. Let me test that one first. Okay. Ohmmeter on. Neg scale. All right, it's past 20 meg. We'll put new ones in there. there I've got plenty of them. It isn't any problem. Where's that 03? There's an 03 right here. That's for this one. Okay. That's got all the capacitors for. Okay, and yeah, that goes into there. Oh, there it is. I was going to say, where the hell is the damn hole? Okay, this is the one we're replacing. Okay, I'm going to pull that wire out of here. Get her. Okay. Okay, and that goes to there. Those two are okay. All right, now I got one more. The whole five. Yeah, let's see what we got. And on to there. Okay. I've been I've been testing just for the hell of it. I've been cutting them out and throwing them away. Damn. I, that one was not a bad capacitor. I'm gonna put that in my uh, my capacitor box. It's reading above 20 meg ohms. <laughs> if, if it's gone as old as it is and hasn't leaking more than 20 meg ohms, it'll it'll go that much again. It'll go 20 more megs. 
or 20 more years without without leaking. So um, I'll be long dead by then. Oh yeah, I don't have to worry about it. Okay, I gotta cover that. Right. Put them there. Okay, the next thing I gotta do, I gotta get the grinder and grind off that line cord thing and put a line cord on it. Okay, I'm just gonna grind that out of there. Now I've got to have a, a line cord. Let's see. It's right there. That'll be enough. First. Okay. All right, then that goes into there. Okay, that gets us a line cord fastened in. Now the other end. All right, now what I got to do is um, find some capacitors. There. Okay. That gets the line cord hooked up. Okay. All right, the big one. Forty seven. Positive goes to the cathode here. Everything looks good. Ground is right there. I don't want that stupid. Um... Get that shit off of there. No reason. Get that crap in there. Okay. Well, that took care of that. It didn't stick. How about this one? That one's stuck. Okay. OK. 
Okay, that's ground. Okay. And then the red goes to this one here. I didn't get all the sand. I blew it out. But I didn't get all the sand out of it. Okay. So we're going to connect that one to here. Okay. Okay, this one. Okay. Now, let's see, the 50L6 goes right there, Q7 goes there, okay, and we have, okay, the um, K7 is going to go here. The A7 is here, and the 35Z5. Hoop doke! Well, it's a nice, clean looking little radio. Now we just have to um, juice it up and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know where all that sand is coming from. I think it went in the holes in the IF can. I think the IF can is full of sand. I thought I blew it out. I took the air hose and blew it all in there and thought I got it all out of there, but uh, <laughs> every time I move the radio, there's more more sand sitting here. Oh, well. Hey, that's part of part of radio repair. Oh, kadok. Power on. Okay, 35 watts, 33... 31, okay, coming up, 35, 4, 33, okay, 32.8, reading the current that it's pulling, I got a, the, the um, amp meter on the uh, desk, on the bench power supply, on a bench power, I have an amp meter that uh, tells how much um, wattage and current Okay, I am not hearing anything. There should be, when I do this, it'd be scratching. If I touch this, there, there's absolutely no, the speaker is moving, but it's definitely good. I can hear a buzzing noise when I um, listen right at the speaker. I hear 60 cycles, slight, slight 60 cycle. But there's no signal getting through the uh, radio. Okay, that means the transformer is good. Good. All right, now we're good. All right, let's go. Scope on. It's, 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 I can go get a cup of coffee and sit around. Uh, Keysight scope forever to boot up. Well, I got the InfiniVision screen on it. That means we're about 10% done. Oh, 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 oh. I should have got the Rigol scope. I should have got the Rigol. It was $1,000 cheaper, and it probably didn't um, take as long as this to go ahead and um, warm up. Oh, it... it, it. Ah, I got key sight. It says, ah, oh, ha, ha, there's a trace on the scope. <laughs> I'll be damned.
and it, it wiggles when I touch the probe. All right, let's see. First, okay, first thing we do, okay, right now the symptom is it's totally dead. We get nothing out of it. Okay, if I touch the center of the volume control, get nothing. Okay. Alright, 50L6. Alright, I want to get first on now B plus. Okay, we're getting 140 volts. 100 on that one. Oak doke. Alright, on the um, 50L6. Okay, 3 is the plate. Okay, we got full B plus on the plate. Okay, the grid. Oh, I think it's five. Let's see. Let's see. Fifty. Fifty L six. First grid is five. Okay. One, two, three, five. Okay, got nothing. Okay, that's good. Cathode is here. Ooh. We got shit on cathode. Cathode is uh oh. Uh oh. Cathode is uh eight. There, there's nothing on the cathode, no voltage on the cathode. The, the cathode is um, it's it's self biased, so it has 150 ohm resistor, so we should be getting plate current through the tube, which would give us some um, which would give us some voltage on the cathode. We should have about five, about 10 volts, maybe 15 volts. Nothing. Okay. It could be the 50L6 is no good. All right. Hey, we'll get it out of there. Go test it, tube tester. All right, it tests bad. It, it looks like it's gassy. If you look carefully on here, see it's like kind of whitish looking on the getter? That usually means that it's gassed up inside. All right, let me find another 50L6. Okay, a new, brand new 6, um, L6 in, uh, 50L6 in there. All right, let's see. Power's on. Okay, we're not getting sh anything out of it. We do have good power amplifier. I hear a station in the background, but it's way low. All right, so let me. Um, all right, I'm going to want to get this. Take your male vitality, huh? stack, fellas. Female vitality, stack, ladies. Make sure your energy level, make sure you're focused. This very important. And your feet, there were in the times that are coming. There are going to be times where a strong. Volume control has no effect. All right, is something in the volume control circuit? All right, we'll check that out. <clears throat> okay, that's the audio amplifier, and I need a, um, a 12SQ. All right, we're going to look at pin. In six, six, okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Pin six is the plate goes through a point oh one over onto the grid of the power tube. Power tube is obviously working. Okay, the grid of the uh, tube is pin two. Oh, 
heart. Something. Oh. <laughs> All right, when I put this capacitor in there, I hooked it to the wrong pin. I, I put the put the coupling capacitor that I changed out as one of the point oh ones. I connected it to the adjacent pin there, which was the cathode. All right, now, all right, juice her up. And let's see what happens now. Something has got some bias on it. Alright, let's go ahead and set up the IF. We'll set up the IF first. 455 modulated with whatever. Okay, and I need the... Um, okay. There. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're way off. We're sitting at four forty eight. There's 1600. Okay, let's go up. Okay, I'm going to touch up the frequency of the oscillator. The trimmer. Sixteen hundred and sixteen hundred. Okay, let me go down. There's a thousand. Right on the money. See, I'm just setting the generator and then seeing that it matches the dial and setting the two ends. And it, it, we've got the IF set. Now we've got the uh, upper end set. Okay, that takes care of the tuning, but we still have something wrong.
within the DOE is called the Loan Programs Office. And that scandal, the Obama It's like there's a threshold. All right, let's see what we got to do. That's what uh, precipi precipitated the draft. Not just JJ, uh, but several of the guys on that defense that just made it a juggernaut. It's, it's almost like there's a uh, open circuit. Okay. There's, there's, there's an open circuit. The antenna is open circuit. All right. All right, we've got... All right, this one goes to the common of the, um, no, the hot of the uh, tuning condenser. Okay, this one here. Where the problem is. Okay. And if I move. Okay, that's good. All right. Okay, none of that's a problem. None of that's a problem. Okay, now, um, okay, power. Okay, the oscillator's going. Sir, yeah. Okay, then that. Okay. All right, I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. It's it's one of the capacitors I put in there. Well, I don't know what the, where it goes. It came out of there somewhere. Kills it all together. That don't go there. Ah. Okay. Well. All right. Well. You know, you can get too smart, not really too smart, you just call it smart ass. And what I did was I took too many capacitors loose at once. And I got mixed up as to where it goes back again. So I got an extra, <laughs> I've got an extra capacitor here. I have no idea where it goes, but wherever it goes, it's, it's, it's missing right now and it's screwed up. All right, let me get a schematic. 
we're looking for RE201. An RE201, Arvid. Alright. Looking at the schematic, the capacitor that I'm missing is from the AGC to ground. The AGC has no filtering. That will certainly cause the problem. Let's try this one here. Alright, going 05. All right, this will do. That will do. Beatman's book. I got a whole set of those. Another neat one is the two base diagrams. It's got three different sections so you can have three, three um, different tubes open at the same time. I don't think you can get these anymore. All right. I predict we should have good functionality. Oh, I see. The, the pointer going through this metal plate here is touching it, shorting it to the chassis. Uh, oh, 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 oh. See right there? It's shorting it to the chassis. Okay. I thought it was it was something that was happening when I was moving it. Okay. All right, we can't touch now. Okay, there's something completely, totally, totally wrong here. All right, okay, that's working good. That takes care of the chassis. Okay, now.
See, that completely cleans all the dirt off of it. Now, we'll let that dry, and then we're going to wax it, and it'll be ready to go. Okay, now, there's still, in some of the tight places, there's still some of the uh, residue. So I'm going to take this uh, Dremel tool with a wire brush. Takes it right out of here. gets rid of the uh, rest of the uh, sand. It looks like it got splashed by water that had uh, dirt in it and it just condensed on there. Okay, now let's get some wax. This is just car wax, same as we used on the other one. Alright, let that dry for about a half an hour to an hour, and then we'll buff it. Okay, it's been about um, half an hour. Take our buffing rag here and um, see what we can do. Ooh, that could be pretty. That looks good. Alright, now I'm going to go and blow it off with a little bit of air and that's going to be it. Alright, now we got our piece of grill cloth has to go in there. I'm just going to put a little bit of contact spray. It looks good. 
All right, now I got to take this out and wash it. I just wash it in the sink, soap and water, clean it up. All right. Okay, see how clear that is? Got that yellow out of there. Just a little bit of soap and water. Oh, hang on, that has to come back. Now, um, next thing that has to be done, we've got to clean these, um, these knobs that have got dust on them. All right, got this. That's it. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, if you plug it in, turn it on. Ooh, got pilot light. To glow, isn't it? Try different things oh, okay. and not just be so. <laughs> Okay. There it is. Two little bitty radios. It's physically small. Okie doke. That is just cute as can be. Well, that's the end of the little little brown ones. I've got, I've got some little metal ones that have to be done. We'll do them coming up. I've got a real nice one to do next.